in the last chapter, you saw how to create your own models completely from scratch, which is a very useful skill to have. However, you also saw how long it can take to train a network from zero as you start to use more advanced model architectures. State-of-the-art models may be much larger, and even when training on the server side with a GPU, it can take hours, days, or weeks to train. Now, what if you could reuse a model that's already trained on a similar task and repurpose it to work with a similar custom data faster by reusing the knowledge it already knows? Well, if you think about it, we as humans do this all the time. You have a lifetime of experiences contained in your brain that you can use to help recognize new things that you've never seen before. Take this willow tree, for example. Depending where you are in the world, there's a chance you may have not seen this type of tree before. Yet, if I now ask you to tell me if there's any willow trees in this image, you can probably spot them pretty fast, even though they're at a very different angle and slightly different to the one that I originally showed you. And essentially, you already have a bunch of neurons that know how to identify tree-like objects and other neurons that are good at finding long straight lines. And you can reuse that knowledge to then classify a willow tree pretty fast, which is basically a tree-like object that has a lot of long liney branches in the vertical direction. So in a similar manner, if you have a model that's already trained on some domain like recognizing images, you can reuse it to perform a different but related task. In this case, you can do the same with an advanced model like MobileNet shown here. MobileNet is a very popular research model that's able to perform image recognition on 1,000 different object types. From dogs to cars, it was trained on a huge data set known as ImageNet that has millions of labeled images, and the model itself is much deeper than anything you've created on this course. In fact, you can see in this animation here the huge number of layers that it has in this MobileNet V1 model. Now, during its training, it's already learned how to extract common features that matter for all of those 1,000 objects. And many of the lower level features that it uses to identify such objects can be useful to detect new objects that it's never seen before too. After all, everything is just ultimately a combination of lines, textures, and shapes. Now, if you could separate the pre-trained lower level convolutional layers of an existing trained model, as shown on the left, from the classification layers near the end of the model shown on the right, which are sometimes referred to as the classification head of the model, you could then use this convolutional layer to produce output features for any given image based on the original data it was trained on. Now, assuming the new image data can also make use of such output features, then there's a good chance that they can be reused for a new purpose. In the diagram shown, this model was trained on digits, so maybe what was learned about digits can also be applied to letters like A, B, and C too. So now you could add a new classification head that's trying to predict A, B, or C instead, and then train only the classification head whilst freezing the other convolutional layers as they were already trained to prevent them from changing. Now the act of doing this is known as transfer learning, and it's what Teachable Machine does behind the scenes that you saw in action at the start of the course. You can also see that by only having to train the multi-layer perceptron at the very end of the network, it will train much faster than if you had to train the whole network from scratch. So how can you get your hands on the subparts of a model? Well, for more advanced research models like MobileNet, if you head on over to TensorFlow Hub and then filter for models suitable for TensorFlow.js that use the MobileNet v3 architecture, you'll find results like the ones shown. Now, some of these results are of type image classification and others are of type image feature vector as shown. These image feature vector results are essentially the pre-chopped up versions of MobileNet that you can use to get the image feature vectors instead of the final classification. Now, models like this are often called base models from which you can then use to perform transfer learning. If you open up the page for one of these feature vector MobileNet v3 models, you can see from the JS documentation that it's in the form of a graph model. As you know from previous chapters, graph models are highly optimized for running as fast as possible. However, if you're lucky, sometimes you may find versions that are in the layers format, which can be far more useful for transfer learning as you can then combine your new classification layers with the layers of the base MobileNet model after training is complete. You can then call model.save on that combined model to get one model to use in the future instead of needing to load two models. Also, if a model is in the layers format, you can manually chop up the layers at any point you wish rather than having to rely on someone else to provide you with a pre-chopped up model. 
Now it should be noted that transfer learning sometimes involves the retraining of the base model too for fine tuning, but you shall focus on the second form of transfer learning that only retrains a new classification head that you add to the base model instead. Essentially though, if you have a model in the layers format, you can choose which layers to freeze and which to unfreeze for training, which can be very powerful. Also worthy of noting is that the new model you create will often be referred to as the transfer model. So you already know that time of training is a key advantage of using a transfer learning approach, as you already have trained the base model to build upon. But there's also other benefits too. Typically, you can get away with showing far fewer examples of the new thing that you're trying to classify. You saw with Teachable Machine that you could take about 30 images of any object in your room and it was then able to detect it pretty well. This is really great if you've got limited time and resources to gather example data of the thing you want to classify and need to make a prototype really fast before gathering more training data to make it more robust. As such, given the need for less data and the speed of training a smaller network, transfer learning is less resource intensive, which makes it very suitable for the browser environment too, taking just tens of seconds on a modern machine instead of hours, days, or weeks for the base model creation. All right. So let's put all of this knowledge into practice and actually perform some transfer learning using state-of-the-art models like MobileNet as your base model.